I was born in Korea, moved here uh, in my early 20s. We were struggling because, you know, my father was injured. He lost ability to work in his 40s, actually. So my mom had to take care of seven of us. Looking back, I think that actually helped us to become, you know, strongly bond to each other. And all seven of us are very close. We, we would do anything for each other. I have a twin sister who we are identical. There were some who looked just like me who were striving herself to become somebody or something. <laughs> Maybe I'm go-getter because I had to constantly work hard to become, to make myself look like better than her. I've always wanted to study in the in, in U.S. And I guess I was strong and bold enough and courageous enough to just pack up and, pack up and just come. It was a struggle, long, long struggles, because just to survive, because I was all by myself. I had several jobs, like sometimes three jobs. I was teaching and I was learning dental technique, work in a dental laboratory, and working in a restaurant till one o'clock in the morning. For 20 years, I was alone for. Uh, when I was living in Ann Arbor, before my sister came. So I had nobody to lean on if I needed the help. So I had to have a job. But um, computer graphic design was the only uh, way to um, provide me uh, income-wise. the bad postures um, with the heavy, heavy uh, workload was the cause of the uh, spinal cord injury. The entire Ann Arbor site, about 3,000 employees, got laid off because they shut the entire site down. It was a shock. Um, to everybody actually at that time. Bill said, if you walk around in you know, the hallway, there are women uh, like sobbing because they don't know what to do. I was in a, a hospital at that time and they laid me off first. I was angry at first. Here I am, worked like a dog, and you guys let me go first. I, I needed that job because obviously I had to support myself, and I needed the insurance, obviously, to cover my expenses, medical expenses. But anyway, at first I was very angry, but I don't know what it was, that special, that power, something greatness, we, I call it God, helped me to go through this struggles. You lost job, you lost your health, you lost ability to walk, you lost your hands. But look at you, you, you have him, you, you have your family. You, you may look like you lost everything, but you have everything. And the blessings you can count on are going to be abundant. It's going to be, it's abundantly you, you've been given. And I felt like I need to look at those, you know, look at that positive side. And actually, when I was in the hospital, I thought I'm going to be in the wheelchair for the rest of my life. Um, 
at that time, I just had to, you know, learn how to walk because my my finger, my fingers were like stuck like this, just like that, like plaster sculpture. It didn't move, nothing. When I was in the hospital, I was just basically trying to, you know, survive, I guess, you know, because I was in a wheelchair and I didn't know what I'm going to be doing <laughs> at that time, but after four, I think about four or five years of intense physical therapy, it's just very painful physical therapy and occupation therapies that basically I had to learn how to walk like a toddler from the, the scratch. I was starting you know, walking, my finger was still stiff, you know, and then my shoulders were so stiff and my burning sensation is it's not going to go away. And that is ongoing struggles. But when I was able to walk and use my hands, that's when I felt like, you know, I need to do something about my life. And art just came naturally. I was an artist inside, inside me. Just, I just didn't bring that out. I was an artist before I even realized it. And I just enrolled um, at Eastern Michigan University first. And then I transferred here to Western. I don't want people to look at my paintings and feel my pain. I want them to see, you know, the struggles and overcoming struggles, but more so, more of uh, blessings that I feel daily. And, you know, like using something unpleasant feelings to create something magnificent and beautiful. See, I don't take life for granted anymore. Colors and textures, um, somehow, they're my life. You know, textures. It's, you I want, I don't know, I feel it. You know, the burning sensation. How can I use this? burning sensation and put it on the canvas. So I have to have some kind of textures, not only colors. Colors, I see it. Colors, sometimes burning, sometimes cold, ice cold. or the spheres I have, or, or egg shapes, it's representing a life. If you see more than one sphere, it's many new lives. Because the womb is, the, uh, womb is holding a life, right? Mm -hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Just happened. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I kind of like it. Everything is a blessing. And that's why I made my, my life model as things happen for a reason. Things do happen for a reason. I strongly believe that I have a spinal cord damage for a reason. And my life journey is, is to find that goal, or find that reason. What is that? What is the reason? And in the process, I'm hoping to find the reason that it's pleasant. <laughs> But it's all up to you, mm -hmm. you know. It's up to you to look at. You know, I have, very, I, I think I'm a very high spirit and very positive views about life. And, and I choose to tolerate this pain as a blessing. <laughs>